Coming up, the Big Ten media rights deal is almost done and ESPN is out. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You're listening to Locked On Big Ten. Thanks for making the show your first listen every day of the week. And we've got a good show lined up for you today. As always, follow the show on wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube to watch. It's Locked On Big Ten, Locked On Big One Zero, not T E N. I'm your host, Nate Dickinson. My Twitter at Nate with Sports, the show Twitter at Locked On Big One Zero again. Coming up on today's show, a lot to get into. Breaking news that ESPN is out of the Big Ten media rights deal, and a deal could be right around the corner with three big networks involved. We'll talk about all of that in just a second. Later on, the AP College Football Poll, no, 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 Coaches College Football Poll came out yesterday. We'll look at where the D1 big minds, head coaches, have the Big Ten teams going into the season. Let's start, of course, with the biggest news of the day in the Big Ten. This coming out just a few hours ago, the Big Ten and ESPN have broken off negotiations at least for now. In fact, I shouldn't say that even. The reports coming out say that there are still talks going on, but at the moment, ESPN is reportedly out of the Big Ten media rights deal. And there could be a new deal around the corner with Fox, of course, but also CBS and NBC. Huge, huge implications on what that means. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But this ESPN thing is huge. ESPN and Big Ten have been together for 40 years. ESPN and ABC even further back before that into the 60s, I believe it was. So these games going away from ESPN is huge for what this means for the conference and the network going forward, just in the way that you're going to watch your football games, your basketball games, all of it. I mean, just think about in the last years, maybe not the biggest games, but how many of your games were on an ESPN network? If not just, again, the football and basketball stuff, what happens to the rest of the sports that have games being broadcast on ESPN+, Plus, ESPN3? I don't know all that. I don't know what any of this means as far as that stuff goes, but just the fact that we won't have Big Ten football on college football Saturdays on ESPN is huge. This in turn also means that ESPN isn't going to be promoting Big Ten football games in the same way. That's just the way that networks work, and of course big games will still get big coverage, but the network of ESPN has made it pretty clear that if you're not a game, or let me put it this way, if you are a game that they're broadcasting, they're going to hype you up big. Because it's a business here. While also trying to do honest sports reporting as well, and getting everyone what they want to know. So I, again, can't explain enough how big the implications of all this are for, again, both ESPN and the Big Ten. But I have a few notes on just like first thoughts. Uh, ESPN turned down an offer, I believe it was seven years with, I think it was somewhere in 300 to 400 million dollars for whatever games or whatever piece of the puzzle they were going to be getting. It was a, a huge contract, of course, but there was uh, apparently not enough money at ESPN to do it or ESPN didn't want to do it. Of course, none of that reporting's come out. I've tried to wrap my head around all of that. Why would ESPN be backing out of this? Maybe they think they can get value better elsewhere, meaning that they can get other conferences for less or try to, as I was reading, just continue to push college football playoff games and other things that they may prioritize a bit more. But as far as like college football rights go, it's not going to get any better than the Big Ten as far as quality of games. So could ES be going to try and get smaller games in a bigger volume for less money? There's all sorts of ways that this could be working from the business side. But again, the point is ESPN is out. So another question 
I had was what happens again outside of football season to ACC Big Ten Challenge games. I mean, that's just one of the facets here we have to think about. Those games all broadcast on ESPN. Those now conferences with what's going to be different kind of media contracts than what both networks would like to do. Could it be changing to something else entirely? Someone suggested that the ACC Big Ten Challenge now is going to become the ACC SEC Challenge just because of what's been happening and what it means with ESPN networks. The question of did ESPN have the money to compete is an interesting one. But I don't think that's the problem as much as ESPN just kind of prioritizing other things, thinking if we're going to spend this much money, let's get the most bang for the buck they can. And while the Big Ten is, of course, a huge amount of big college football and sports, there's also a whole lot of other sports to be had. Again, all sorts of non-rev sports. ESPN has been leaning constantly on relying on you to need their services to watch the games that aren't on regular TV. It's a big part of what they do. So I don't know what's next for ESPN. But with what's happening with the Big Ten next is very interesting, because along with this reporting that the Big Ten is done with ESPN, comes news that a deal could be imminent, being finalized, by with the Big Ten and three major networks, Fox, of course, CBS, and NBC. With Fox having its noon game, NBC getting its primetime game that we had talked about before, and CBS filling in in that middle time slot to get Big Ten on national television throughout the day every single week. Now, I, of course, don't know if that's exactly how things work. NBC, it reportedly would have games on Peacock as well. I don't know what happens with the rest of Big Ten sports again, because there's going to be, what, six Big Ten games every week when we get into the college seat, or seven when we get into the conference season. So that's three games on each of those major networks. Big Ten gets games. Fox Sports 1 gets games, of course. But if you're NBC and CBS, are you fighting for more than one game a week here? And if so, where do those games go? NBC has Peacock. Is CBS going to try and put live coverage on their digital platforms now, too? It's, it's all very, very fluid still. And I'm very, very interested to see the exact details, if we are actually close to a deal here, on how this is all going to work. Because I love the idea of Big Ten throughout the day on three major networks every single week. But it, it may not even work that way. I mean, SEC and CBS is going to be done. But like, what does CBS and then NBC and Fox, well, Fox has Big Ten, but what does CBS and NBC do to try and supplement their college football coverage, I guess? I don't know exactly how all this works, but it's very, very big, this coming out that EFTN is done. Throughout all the conversations that we've had, it's been, okay, ESPN's probably going to keep whatever chunk they decide to pay for, but how much can other networks and streaming services chop off of that? Now that ESPN's off the table entirely, it leads to all sorts of conversations. I mean, we can have the conversation I had notes down here about, like, can this slow down Big Ten expansion next offseason? Because ESPN will have more money to, to potentially spend on other conference deals, helping those conferences out, helping out teams who otherwise and right now are thinking we need to make a move, right? Like, that's like the way, way end of the rabbit hole kind of thing of it. But that's kind of where we're at with what this is. The possibilities are endless, and it seems like we're going to learn a lot more very soon because this news is coming out all very quickly. So whenever this happens, we're going to have to break down everything from who gets what games and how things get split up to, again, how you're going to go day to day watching your Big Ten sports because there's still a lot of question marks to be surrounded for a lot of different areas of college athletics that aren't the ones that are being talked about mainly right now too again it's not just football and basketball but even the football and basketball inside of this gets a whole lot more confusing if you're not on the espn networks i mean the big games were on national tv but other than that you went to espn plus or at least i did to see if the game you were looking for was on there if it wasn't one of the big tv games that's what it was 
Now that's changing. It's going to change. I just don't know how exactly. It's going to be really, really fun to watch that breakdown and break it down when the news actually does break of an actual deal here on the show. Coming up, though, we're going to look at how the coaches in the nation feel about Big Ten teams as the coaches' top 25 came out yesterday. That's coming up right here on Locked On at Big Ten. But first, a look at LinkedIn Jobs, which is the place that you need to be if you're trying to get a job filled right now. It's LinkedIn. I don't have to sell you on LinkedIn. You know what LinkedIn is. LinkedIn Jobs is a branch of that that goes in and actually provides a platform for you to post your jobs, find job seekers. And of course, if you've used hiring sites before, you know one of the biggest parts of it is having that big network of people. And LinkedIn has that huge network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Looking now at the top 25, as the college coaches poll came out yesterday, the Big Ten has eight teams mentioned in a list, not in the top 25, but in what is a total list of 25 teams and then all other teams receiving votes. It brings us to a list of 55 teams mentioned, which is a lot of teams to try and break down. But let's start at the actual top 25 and the Big Ten teams that land there. Of course, the Ohio State Buckeyes are tops in the Big Ten. They clock in at number two in the country. It was, I guess, maybe a little surprising to me to see the Buckeyes get over Georgia here. The Bulldogs did have one more first place vote than Ohio State, and it is very close between those two schools. But Alabama, a pretty definitive number one. Ohio State, two. Georgia, three. Clemson, four, is where the coaches see the college football playoff going into the season. Number five is Notre Dame. And then number six, you get Michigan and the Wolverines. These are two really solid rankings, if you're asking me. Ohio State, I think if you're looking at the number two spot, that's probably where most Buckeye fans would put themselves right now. And for Michigan, number six is a big, big vote of trust from college football coaches after a great season, of course. But, uh, I mean, I was assuming Michigan would be like top 10. I don't know if they would get this high. I mean, you're looking at the top four teams, then Notre Dame and Michigan right there. When you're talking about college football blue bloods, Michigan's in there with everybody else. Top 10, then Texas A&M, Utah, Oklahoma, and Baylor. Those two top Big Ten teams are in really good positions, if you ask me. I don't think you can argue too much like up or down that kind of stuff. I guess I do think Michigan's a little bit high at six. But as far as the talent of those two teams, it's there. So I don't think there's any point really at this point measuring like, okay, is Ohio State two or should they be three? No. Kind of pointless. Where things get more interesting is in the middle of this top 25. And then right after, too, I'll actually include others receiving votes here in this list a bit as well. But we have here after Michigan and Ohio State. Michigan State comes in at 14. Wisconsin at 20. And then Iowa at 26. Penn State at 27. And that is kind of the meat of this Big Ten that can make things really interesting. Is Are those four teams going to be that kind of good? Can all four of them be top 25 good? That's, I think, not a question as far as talent goes. I think they can all get to the top 25 at the end of the season if you're looking at what they are right now. But we're talking about like when the games are actually played. Who's vulnerable to have a letdown season? Who's going to lose maybe three, four games? And again, you can end up in the top 25 there. But is there a team that ends up just 500 and is going to end up making this not just in accurate with what they're saying here with the polls, but also just make the Big Ten season less fun. That's what I'm talking about. I think that's the make or break group, is if all four of those teams are good, then we're looking at really, really fun football week in and week out in the Big Ten. Somebody good is going to be playing somebody good all the time. If a couple of those teams fall off and you're looking at like only four really solid Big Ten teams, that's when I'm like, yeah, okay. This is Big Ten football, but it's not what it was last year, you know? Again, I'm not saying I don't believe in anyone here, really. Michigan State, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Penn State. It's Michigan State 14, Wisconsin 20, Iowa the first team in the others receiving votes category, and then Penn State the second team 
in others receiving votes. So technically number 26 and number 27 if rankings went that far. So teams won believe in those two teams in the Big Ten West still, which is kind of obvious when you say it out loud. But at the same time, those teams lost players. I wouldn't have been surprised if a Wisconsin, Iowa, Penn State wasn't end up in that top five. Wisconsin, probably not. But as far as like Penn State goes, I was a little surprised to see them that high as far as like I think maybe biggest displacement as to where I would have had teams. I think I would have had Penn State a few notches lower. I mean, they're coming off four and five and then seven and six. I still think Jane Franklin's a really good coach. I still think that's a solid program. But when we're talking about top 25 teams, I don't know if they would have gotten that many votes from coaches nationwide. They did. So I'm proven wrong. And then the other two teams mentioned in this top 25 list, which is actually leading up to with others receiving votes, 55 teams. You have two teams in the West, Minnesota and Purdue. This, I think, is really interesting when we talk about the openness of the West side of the Big Ten division. Now, Minnesota only received six votes here, to put in at number 43 on the list. Purdue only received two votes to clock in at number 50, and I'm sure tied at number 52. But when you think about what this list is, you're looking at coaches and asking them, who are your top 25 teams? This is not a list of the top 55 teams in the country. This is coaches picking their top 25. So at least a couple of coaches or one coach had Minnesota or Purdue in that spot. So when you're thinking about, okay, who can really contend for the West? You're thinking about top 25 teams, right? So at least in the coaches' eyes, there is at least a couple people out there who think that Minnesota is good enough to be a top 25 team, therefore good enough to compete with the Wisconsin or an Iowa to be in that Big Ten West battle. Purdue, same thing. And that's, I think, big for those two teams, of course. They're not thinking about right now being 43rd and 50th in the country as far as coaches' AP polls go. But it's big for them to have that, I think, belief from other coaches around. And maybe I shouldn't say big for them. Maybe the teams themselves are just going to do what they do. But it's big for the hope, I guess, around the program to have other coaches who believe in you. It's big for fans to be able to say, hey, there's somebody who believes that we're a top 25 team who is another one of the fellow coaches out there. And when I'm looking for like things that I don't know, like little hints, I guess that's what I take away from the coaches poll. Because again, the media poll is the one that gets used officially on all the rankings and top 25 polls once we get started. But this coach's poll provides an insight to the game of football that, you know, is a little bit different. So when I'm thinking, okay, who are the top contenders to challenge the Wisconsin and Iowa regime in the West? It's got to be Minnesota and Purdue first. Because that's who, at least right now, the coaches are telling me are the teams that have a shot to be top 25. And again, this is their top 25 right now. Not like what they could be at the end of the season. So these are coaches who are saying that Minnesota and Purdue are that level of talented at this moment. And if you put them up against Wisconsin or Iowa right now, not when they've gotten a chance to figure out the season, then it would be a great game. And it's only going to get better, I think, as we get going. It'll be interesting to see again if those two teams are able to hold up to the expectations and start off well enough to play in these kind of good games. But when I'm looking at, like, and Nebraska, the only team I thought might be getting a vote or two that didn't in the Big Ten, that's a team that, according to me, was getting a lot of hype for the season, came into this season thinking, okay, we can make a big leap, get over 500, maybe even contend for the Big Ten West with what everyone's been saying about us preseason. But the coaches don't say that they're a top 25 team. Not a single one. And they shouldn't be in the preseason, to be honest. But that was the only team in my head that was like, oh, maybe we will see a Nebraska get in there with a vote or two. That's the cutoff, I guess. Is there a saying, hey, Minnesota, Purdue, there are people who see them as top 25 good going into this season. And while maybe Maryland has a potential to have a breakout year, and Nebraska has a potential to have a breakout year, or a Rutgers has a potential to improve, continue to improve, and get into that top 25 by the end of the season, this is who we think it is right now at this moment. And I think that matters a lot. 
So again, eight Big Ten teams mentioned in the top 55 teams listed. We have four of them in the actual top 25 with two more in the first two spots right out of it. And with where everyone is, I'm pretty happy. I don't think Michigan could ask for much more than two, or um, Ohio State could ask for much more than two. I don't think Michigan could ask for much more than six. Same thing with Michigan State at 14, Wisconsin at 20. Maybe they could ask for a couple of more spots. But aside from that, I feel like this is a pretty optimistic thought of what the Big Ten season could be this year. If all these teams are this good again, I'm happy, no doubt. We're going to talk about the latest news coming up here in the Big Ten, or on Locked On Big Ten to wrap things up, as well as a first look at Pro Football Focus's all Big Ten preseason teams. Just a couple of numbers we'll probably get into in an actual show segment later, in a full segment with somebody else breaking down who should and who shouldn't be on that list. But we'll get a first look at that as well as all the other news around the Big Ten from the last day here to wrap things up. Back in on Locked On Big Ten, closing things down for the day. A couple of things just to note really, really quickly. The Big Ten has started the Big Ten Foundation, a charitable organization that, to be quite honest, I haven't looked all that much into yet. The conference tweeted it out earlier today and of course that got overshadowed by all sorts of big news on things going on with what's with happening with ESPN and all that so if you search Big Ten right now this thing is pretty pretty well buried I looked it up right now real quick uh, quote from the Big Ten website to serve its members institution communities through the charitable giving and volunteerism it's a it's a charity it's the Big Ten Foundation and of course congratulations good job help people do good stuff other notes, Pro Football Focus released its all Big Ten teams, a whole lot of players, I believe three full teams out there, uh, six Ohio State Buckeyes across the first team just alone, five of them on offense. So again, I, I don't need to keep pounding into the ground. Ohio State's really good. That's all for Locked On Big Ten here today. No recruiting update, no commits to the Big Ten in the last day. Day. Again, things are going to slow down once the season gets started here. We'll talk more about anything that happens in the Big Ten in the next day. Maybe some media rights. Hopefully, I would love to see those end up getting tied up, whatever ends need to be, before or sooner rather than later. But we'll see what happens. Any other news around the Big Ten? We'll get into Athlon's PFF All Big Ten teams as well here. That's all coming up as we continue along the week here on Locked On Big Ten. Everything you need to know every day of the week on the conference. Thanks, as always, for making the show your first listen every weekday. I'm Nate Dickinson. I'll be back tomorrow with another show. And, of course, follow the show wherever you're listening right now. If you don't listen and would prefer to watch, you can go to YouTube.com and subscribe at Locked On Big Ten. That's one zero, not T-E-N. Same on the podcast platforms. Same on Twitter as well. My personal Twitter is at Nate with Sports. We'll be back tomorrow here on Locked On Big Ten.